So what do you think they're going to bite on today, boy? So what do you think? I'm going to go out later, so maybe top water. Some of that, some of that, some of that end of the day top water bite, maybe. Hmm? What do you think, dude? Tell me. What you think? What you think? <laughs> well, I'm getting ready to head out for a little bit of fishing. I'm going to be doing some deep cranking, some top water, and maybe a little bit of drop shot if both of those don't work. Going out to one of my favorite fisheries, Three Oaks Recreational Area in Crystal Lake, Illinois. It's pretty good to me yesterday, and I just didn't have the equipment that I needed to get some of those fish. So I'm going back today, going to get on a good afternoon bite. Hopefully that rain holds off, or the lightning. The rain won't bother me, but the lightning needs to hold off so I can get out there and get some fish. So right here is kind of the get up for today is to what I'm going to try to use. I'm not going to be using all of this, but I'm going to be bringing it with me as kind of a plan B, C, and etc. Start off with, I'm going to stick with this DT6. Even though I think it's a little too shallow, I think that color pattern is going to do pretty well. And that's pretty much the only gill pattern I have in a deep dive and crankbait in. It's deeper than uh, six feet. So we're going to give that a go. If that doesn't work, we're going to go some a little bit deeper, like a 6XD. I believe this is a 6XD. I'm not positive. But Strike King, change out the hooks. Got two gammas on there. Was round bed. And super, super strong hooks. Work great for braid, too, if you're throwing top water. But you notice right here, I put one of those larger size four, I think, round bends on the back just to kind of stick some of those fish that may happen to swipe at it and clear water. That happens a lot. And then I put a little bit of a shorter size six uh, EWG on there as well. So I don't know how that's going to work out, but we'll see. Kind of looks a little bit better as far as it kind of matches the, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about, but it kind of looks like it matches the color pattern a little bit. So on the finesse side of things, I'm going to be throwing a Big Bite Baits Shaking Squirrel. It's a four inch size and a watermelon red flake, and that's gonna be on a drop shot rig. If that fails or just doesn't work out too well, I'm gonna throw the Ned rig. I haven't thrown this too much. This is a finesse TRD by Z-Man, and it'd be a pretty decent place to fish it, although those boulders might eat that bait up. And I've also got these seismic grubs two by gallons, and I've always wanted to try these out in clear water. That's a pretty good looking color right there for this water clarity. That's pretty translucent, and I think it'd show it up pretty well. And then right here, I've just got all my terminal tackle. I'm bringing some hooks with me just in case there's some technical difficulties with that. I'm going to be filling the Ned Rig with this weight right here. It's the Savage Gear. They use this for the crawls, but I found these work pretty good for a um, Ned style rig. And I've got some Lunker City lead drop shot weights because you always lose these. No point in buying tongues if you're going to lose them. And i got some super small size 8 walleye wide gap hooks for drop shot fishing. These work really well. The smaller the hook, the better in my opinion. And I got a little bit bigger ones too, just in case. On the reaction side of things, we got some more crankbaits, an absolute kind of mess. I just got like a chatterbait in here. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I may not even go into any of these colors today. This, this, this isn't, I'm not going to even talk about some of these. These aren't very good clear water deep diving crankbaits, although I might try a few. This one looks pretty decent, although I got to change the back hook out on that one if I do want to use it. On my way to Three Oaks, finally. Um, took a quick nap and dad came as soon as I woke up so I took the car out it's 5 13 p.m. hopefully don't get hit with too bad of a weather here in a little bit the forecast is supposed to call for lightning around I think what was it 8 p.m. but we were supposed to get that yesterday at like uh, what was it I think 3 p.m. and it didn't even start until I think around 12 a.m. whatever the meteorologist is on must be good stuff because the weather is just way off today today and yesterday so right now it's 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 a little cloudy but it's hot it's around 85 degree fahrenheit and um the bite i think will turn on as soon as i get there once the sun starts to set that's when that bite really turns on and, and hopefully some of those small moths start moving up i mean i literally had fished there i started fishing there 1 p.m worked the whole lake around twice and then right around 5 30 5 45 ish you could see the smallmouth moving up. Something must have been there that, that, that turns on an alarm clock to make those smallmouth do that and nose up right on the shoreline. Yesterday it was so crazy. It was almost like a dinner bell. As soon as that, that sun started to go down, the fish became really active. They moved up onto some bigger boulders, some bigger chunk rock. I actually had one fish come up and hit my drop shot on top of the water. As soon as my drop shot hit the water, this thing smoked. It was a two pound fish. Of course, it didn't get hooked because there's all that you know line that's under the, the, the actual bait itself so it just goes to show how aggressive this fish and the thing is I only had one rod with me and that was like my finesse rod of the 10 pound test and I only had a few hooks a few drop shot weights and a few small big bite bait worms these fish are 
I would say 80% visual feeders. I had a couple instances yesterday where I'd cast out, I'd see a fish close to shore and I'd cast out into the deep run, and I'd watch that fish from the shallow run at about five feet of water, go into 20 feet of water where my worm was at and, and bite it. So I'm pretty stoked to, to see what the bite is. Oh, we might have some overcast coming in the farther we get to Crystal Lake, but we'll have to check it out and I'll turn the camera back on once we get a little closer, so stay tuned. All right, so I just made it out to Three Oaks. It's, I think, just two minutes short of 340. I've got the mic going right now because it is pretty windy out, and I'm gonna walk to the spot. Right off the bat, I see a couple nice, you know, pound and a quarter, decent range size for this lake. Large mouth, kind of chilling in the shallow ends over here, so that's a very good sign to start off this, uh, this excursion with you know that means that they're moving up a little early this overcast has got uh, has got the dinner bell ringing a couple minutes ahead of schedule and hopefully that means that I can get on a decent bite without having to work too hard for these fish there's one oh dude my reel fell off Oh my god, my reel just fell off. <laughs> it's a nice one too. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I forgot to put the reel back on. <laughs> what a freaking mess, dude. I got a hook in my arm. <laughs> it's bass. <laughs> Look at that, dude. That's a sweet, deep cranking bass. That's my third cast. My freaking reel fell off. I got a crankbait stuck in my arm. But nonetheless, it's a nice summertime largemouth. That was the most craziest thing I think has ever happened to me, fishing a reaction bait. <laughs> that son of a gun, dude. I can't believe that. Oh, check that out, though. Nice fish. Oh, crazy. <laughs> crazy. My freaking reel just fell off. I can't believe that. That's so annoying. I thought he was a lot bigger than that, but still nice. There it goes again. It's supposed to fall off. <sighs> All right. All right. Now we're doing it. Now we're in business. That reel ain't coming off anymore. That thing hit it as soon as it touched the rocks. I'm giving it a few really good winds so it gets down there into the depth I want it. And then I'm just kind of bouncing this thing above these rocks trying to get it lodged real tight in some of that chunk rock. This is some really thick stuff. For those of you guys that have saw my Insta Instagram post the other day, saw that fish that had lodged itself in between two big boulders, and that's kind of why I'm not fishing the, the drop shot anymore, mainly because I don't want to risk having a nice fish come off doing that again. So I'm doing a little faster approach today, throwing a crank. Hopefully that won't be the last fish, the only last fish. But as you can see, I'm cranking it down there real deep. And then I'm slowing it down. This is 6.4 to 1 gear ratio. I like a little faster gear ratio in these hotter months. I like grinding it up against those rocks. As long as I make contact with those rocks, I'm in, I'm in business. I can see them. There's, you know, there's, there's three fish right in front of me right now that are two and a half pounds. Just kind of chilling. Trying to get that bait to hit those rocks in the way they like it. I mean, dang on! As soon as that thing hit the hit the first big boulder, he was on it. So let's hope for some more here. Check that line every now and then. Make sure we're in business. Line's feeling pretty pretty frayed. Check this out. This is why you have to retie all the time. Dang on! See, that's why I don't like fishing boulders. It's because that line makes contact with that freaking crankbait. Oh, frustrates me. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna re, I'm gonna retie real quick and uh, get back with you guys. Wasn't the way I wanted to catch a crankbait fish today, but it'll do. And we still have a lot more water to cover. I'm tempted to fish this, but I just didn't see a whole lot of cruisers over here last time. I have to march at where I'm going here a little bit. Let's just get some sketchy. You may be able to hear, but. Going to throw the drop shot a little bit more in this next area, just because that's kind of where I succeeded with it most. Oh my God! If I fall down this cliff, that's hilarious and painful. But yeah, I'm gonna go over.
over to this next point, which looks like the one I just fished. I'll be sure to get a camera shot of what it looks like in the water so you guys can get a better idea of what I'm fishing today. And I'm going to work that, up, that pretty hard because it's a little bit deeper. It's bigger, it's a bigger point. So I'm going to turn the camera back on and get over there. So I switched to a little smaller crankbait, a little shallower crankbait. That being that one I talked about in the, earlier in the video, which is a Repella DT6 in a lifelike bluegill pattern. I don't normally like throwing these kind of patterns, but the bluegill in this lake are spawning right now, and it's very clear in these Fisher visual feeders, like I said earlier, so I'm going to throw this. Oh my God, that thing hammered it. That's a nice one. Hey, stay out of them rocks, stay out of them rocks. Stay out of them rocks, please. Don't you come unplugged, baby. Whoo, that thing hammered it. Golly. <laughs> See, I got a southern draw. That was such a good bite, I, I developed a southern draw. Oh boy, look at that deep crankbait fish. Check that out, folks. <laughs> Awesome. Been meaning to get on a deep crank bite for a long time now, and I finally found an area where I can do it from shore. Since I don't have a boat, you gotta make it happen from shore. Look at that. This is a public body water, by the way. What a beautiful fish. That's two fish probably for about four pounds, give or take. And both those fish look like they were just, just south of two pounds. It's a good call to switch this crank bait up. I think I was making too much contact with them rocks. See a few smallmouth down there. Dude, as soon as it hit that rock, he was on it. That was crazy textbook fish. That was a crazy textbook fish. I see some smallmouth down here on the outer edge where it gets a little sparse. Where the rocks kind of drop off. The boulders drop off into rocks, so I might throw a drop shot over there. Give that a go. But this crankbait bite's still doing pretty decent. Just stuck this, ooh, just stuck this decent little smallmouth on that DT6 in a gill collar off camera. I seen two of them schooling and I waited to cast until they got pretty far away and then I hit them. That one got stuck by that uh, size six gamma or size eight, I'm not sure, but on the front hook instead of the back. Not a bad smallmouth, nothing huge, but that's kind of my goal for today is get at least one nice smallmouth on the crank, which I did. So it's starting to slow down. I might have to switch to something a little bit slower, like a finesse rig, or not hitting the top water. But it's a good sign that he's he smacked this crank. Maybe I'll be able to catch a few more. Nice little smallmouth, though. It's kind of weird that smallmouth gave it a really light bite. I expected it, out of all the fish in here, the smaller smallmouth would have been the ones that would have really smacked down on this bait. But that was a really light bite. It felt like I was running through a grass pile. There's another one. Oh, largemouth. That was a light bite too. I think they're kind of slowing down. That was on the back hook. So I think maybe they're kind of being a little more finicky right now. Although I'm still glad they're hitting the reaction bait, even though the conditions aren't ideal. The only thing I've got for me right now is the low light conditions, but we'd like a little bit of a breeze, even though it's not necessary. That guy hit right by the shoreline too. Okay. Oh shoot, I forgot my keys. Hold on. All right, I need these to drive. Well, that wasn't too bad of a day. Honestly, I, I didn't know I was even gonna do that good. It was kind of a blind pattern that I was going into. I was here yesterday and it looked good for deep cranking and I just wasn't, I just wasn't down for throwing the drop shot in that really nasty boulder situation. So I thought, why not give the deep, deep crank a, a go? It wasn't as productive as the drop shot bite, but I can tell you it was a lot more fun. I like fishing the drop shot only because it's so effective, but the actual technique for me is pretty boring. Um, you know, it's a great fish, fish catching tactic and it's one of my strengths, but I want to do something a little bit different. I want to teach you guys uh, something that I don't normally do a whole lot of. And you know, deep cranking is one of my weaknesses. It really is. So I thought, why not just go out here to this good looking area that is, uh, that is um, uh, not private, but uh, 
cut off from the rest of the recreational area and do a little bit of deep cranking and as you saw there I caught you know two nice large mouth one okay small mouth for Illinois waters and this lake in particular this is some pretty good fish this place gets hit pretty hard but right now it looks like it's gonna pour so I, I may have gotten out of here in, in perfect timing I'm going to head on in get packed up getting ready for ICAST for those of you guys don't know I'm heading down to Orlando Florida in, uh, in T minus let's see about uh, I'd say 18 18 19 hours and I'm gonna be down there representing the mystery tackle box crew I'm not gonna do a whole lot for them down there as far as like filming for them but I'm gonna be down there meeting some new companies talking to some new people talking to some familiar faces Andrew Flair with Fishing with Flair is going to be down there. He's a real cool dude, and we're going to be chilling a whole lot. We're going to be hanging out, maybe doing some filming, just kind of screwing around, going from booth to booth, seeing what's up. Fluke Master, Gene Jensen, Fluke Master is going to be down there. I'm sure you guys all know him. And uh, the Fishing with Florida guys, the FFL guys, are going to be down there as well, and they make some top-notch videos. So there may be some people down there I don't even know of, um, or that I know of that I just don't know are going to be. In Orlando those those couple of days so I'm pretty I'm pretty stoked as a kid I've always wanted to go to ICAST it's one of those dreams that I've always wanted to pursue as a kid you know when I was little I was like 13 14 years old I used to stay up really late and wait for the, the Tackle Warehouse ICAST videos to come up because I was anxious to see what would be coming for the next season so like those videos I'm going to be doing the similar aspect to that as well where I'm going to be filming at these expos these booths and sharing with you guys what's new to come for the 2016 season or later on in the 2015 season so I may upload you know five to six videos per night they're gonna be about a minute to two minute length I'm gonna try to keep them short and sweet just kind of information plugs and showing you what's new to come for the next fishing season and uh, that's my goal I don't know if that's gonna happen for sure but ideally that's what I'm shooting for gosh this road is terrible <laughs> I'm so pumped I can't wait to share the experience with you guys I'm more pumped to share the experience with with my viewers um, the anglers on YouTube more or less than, than the experience it myself so can't wait to pick up the video there I'm gonna be doing these bass dailies. I'm gonna call these bass dailies. They're like a vlog format. They seem to be gaining a lot of traction on the YouTube world. Andrew and I were just talking about this the other day, and we're like, these videos just seem to get a lot of views, and you guys seem to really like them. So I'm gonna try it out. If you guys like them, I'll keep doing them. I used to do them a lot. Well, not a lot, but I did them a little when I first started off the channel, and they just didn't seem to get a whole lot of uh, attention. But now, right now, it seems to be the big thing. So I'm gonna start these off um, on today's video. This is gonna be bass daily number one. And I'm going to pick this up, like I said, once I land in Florida. Or I'll start it in the morning, tomorrow morning, when I'm getting all ready. I haven't even packed, so I'm probably going to pack tomorrow morning. I'm so unprepared. Keep an eye out for the Fishing Midwest channel because I'm going to be posting a lot of stuff. If you have watched up until this point, please comment below that uh, Andrew Flair is your favorite YouTuber. Even though he's not, or maybe he is, just comment in the comment section below. Uh, just because it's funny and I'm interested to see how many of you guys are watching up until this point. And, you know just seeing if it's something I should keep doing and also let me know if you guys are interested in these kind of video layouts because they're easy for me to 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 edit and I think they're kind of fun and laid back and I don't have to take such a serious approach to them so real quick I kind of want to talk about today's bite and what I did to break apart that small portion of shoreline in that deeper lake in Three Oaks so I was using a Shimano Corrado G in a 6.4 to 1 gear ratio I like that faster gear ratio because I find that sometimes in the summertime those fish like that bait to move pretty quickly because the water temp's hot and their metabolism is a little bit higher, so they have no problem chasing down a fast moving bait. But it gives me the option to slow down as well. It's not like a 7.1 to 1 gear ratio. The line that I was using was uh, Sunline's Reaction FC fluorocarbon, and that was in a 14 pound test. I didn't want to go anything lower than that just because of those boulders and those rocks. I'm just real hesitant to go any thinner than that but that's a pretty good reaction line I don't know if it's much different from like you know the, the super the FC sniper but I just like the color of it <laughs> it looks cool and it just has worked well for me in the past the rod I was using was a pen allegiance it's actually a saltwater rod but it has a perfect tip for that deep cranking um, application and then it worked pretty good for me today it's got a nice tip I didn't lose too many fish I think I might be maybe popped off well I popped off on that one little dink but I didn't miss any bites and the lures that I was using, I started off with a KBD 6XD, and that didn't do it too well for me. I mean, it caught me that first fish, but I think it was just getting too deep. It may have been a good bait to use earlier on in the day, maybe around like 12 p.m. or something like that, when those fish were moved off some of those shallow areas. But they were moved up, so I, I stuck with that DT6, and that seemed to be the bait for the end of the day bite. And the hooks I had on those were, on the back was a round bend, Gamagatsu, size four, I believe, or 
Cod guy. I don't remember. Size six or four. But that's a super, super strong hook. Um, I, can't, I can't think of the specific name. It's a specific series. But you can literally use that on an eight-pound braid, horse in a three-pound smallmouth, and the hooks won't even bend. They're fantastic hooks. I love them so much. And they're super, super sticky. And in the midsection of the bait, the front of the bait, I was using a Gamagatsu size eight or six. Again, I don't remember. But that was an EWG. Um, EWG uh, treble hook. Real good hook in it. And it kept that last fish on that last smallmouth on real nicely and uh I'm trying to think what else what else was using that was pretty much it and i was kind of having a stop and start retrieve i was moving it pretty quickly but i would also creep it once i got over those rocks and as soon as i hit those rocks those fish were on it it was just really cool to figure out where those fish were were at and it was such a textbook bite i can't stress how how textbook these fish were acting today and i love it when they're predictable like that i gotta get in the right hand lane ah Yep, me too, buddy. We're both taking a right. Yep, you have to turn your signal on all the way back there. Oh, God, you're driving like a goon. Coma in front of me made me miss my turn. Oh, well, I guess we could go. You gotta stop at the white line, though. Always gotta stop. He's turning. I'm good. Ooh. Jump on, jump on the road. This is nice. They didn't used to have this road. There's a poop plant. That's where they... Uh, clean the poop and dump it back into one of my favorite rivers to fish. <laughs> ah, oh well. I'm tired. I'm really tired. I think I've literally sweat off 100 pounds a day. <clears throat> as soon as I got out of this car, I just like, boom, right in my face. Just sweat. Just humidity. It's the craziest thing. I mean, it was so humid today. And I think, I don't know. I don't know if that had a, an effect on today's bite, if it was good or bad. But, man, I tell you, that was, uh, that was a cool day.